Well, I've been working on my 1991 coupe uh, during the winter months. I've done a lot of work on it. Um, started off going after the uh, velo cover gaskets and eventually decided I was going to just paint the velo covers black. So I did that with just regular automotive paint. It's not high heat paint or anything like that. Um, but if you think about it, the temperature of the hood of a car on a black car gets up to about 200 degrees. You can Google that, find YouTube videos of that. Um, but anyway, so I did valve covers. I replaced the uh, uh, exhaust uh, gaskets down there too. And um, while I was at it, I went ahead and changed the motor mounts. You can't even see those. They're kind of down behind the exhaust manifold. So I did that both sides. And that did a lot of good for the car. Those motor mounts were shot. Um, one thing that happened to me uh, along the way was this uh, alternator bracket right here. I got a little rough with it and I managed to snap off this ear right here. It's kind of a cast aluminum product or whatever. I was able to find a used one. This cost me about 65 bucks for that uh, little bit of uh, idiocy on my part. Um, but I've got the old one right here. And um, you can see the part here that's busted off right there. I went ahead and beveled it back a little bit to make some room for a filler rod. Uh, I found these, it's a burns o -matic kind of an aluminum uh, brazing rod would be kind of, that's what they'd term it, but brazing kind of has to do with brass. But anyway, these rods right here, they melt at 720 degrees and the melting point of aluminum is about 1220 degrees or so. So you've got about 500 degrees to work with. Um, I already used uh, this one rod, you can see it's a little bit short. I already used that underneath the car on a, an aluminum coolant tube. I didn't do the work underneath the car, but this particular car has an oil cooler and down underneath the, the engine there's a, a an aluminum tube that connects the uh, heater hoses to the air or the oil filter area to uh, divert coolant to the uh, oil cooler, if that makes any sense. So anyway, that tube was worn through and I braced it together and these work great. The one thing I found out was using that uh, propane torch was it just really struggled to get that piece of tubing up to temperature. So I'm going to uh, do this work with an acetylene torch. Hopefully it will heat it up uh, quickly, but not too much. There's kind of not a lot of wiggle room when you're using an acetylene torch. I uh, found a metric bolt that's the right bolt, the same one as this one that goes in there. And the spacing on the alternator right there, I uh, used a dial indicator or a, a dial caliper and I found out that this group of stuff right here, if I put it in there and then put that part on there and then bolt it all together, then it's jigged up perfectly for uh, the repair. So I'll get this all ready to go and then start up the torch and see if it works. So I have the alternator bracket jigged up and clamped in a vise. I'm getting ready to uh, try to brace it back together right there. Um, I tried using a uh, propane torch before on another part. It just seemed like it took a long time to warm it up. Uh, did a little Googling, found out a propane torch. The uh, temperature at the tip was about 3,600 degrees. And uh, then the uh, temperature of an oxyacetylene torch tip, and I've got a series of tips right there. It's about 6,300 degrees, so uh, it'll heat it up a lot quicker. I've got uh, three... Uh, tips for my torch that I bought a long, long time ago, probably 60 years ago. It's a number one on the left and number three in the middle and number five on the right. And uh, so you can see the, the tip on the right would put out a lot more heat. I'm gonna use the middle tip of number three. I'm gonna screw it into the uh, torch here in a second and uh, fire up the torch and see if this works. I'm gonna try to tape the iPhone up to that cabinet. Uh, hopefully you guys will get a good view of this. I don't know how well you can hear me. I'll try to talk loud. Um, but anyway, I've got the torch going right now. It's uh, what you call a neutral flame, so it's uh, not over-carburized, not over-oxidized. So that's what a neutral flame looks like. And I've got my eye protection on here. I've got to put my glove on. I'm going to give this a try, see if it works. I 
what I did is I put the filler rod in there too soon before the aluminum parts were heated up adequately. I think they're warm enough now. I've obviously put too much filler in there and I want to make sure I get enough and then I can work that down later. So that's the repair right now and um, we'll go ahead and take it and start filing it down. One thing about that aluminum filler rod, it's actually harder than aluminum so it'll take a little while to work that down and when I get done I'll take a picture of it so you can see it. Give it a tap or two, make sure the thing doesn't fall off in my hand. And uh, if it all looks good, then maybe I'll swap out the part that I bought with this part and see how, uh, how long that repair lasts. So there's the repaired alternator bracket. Um, get a good look at it. I filed down some of the... Uh, extra bead on there. The one thing that I wish I'd done, I wish I'd glued it out a little bit on the back side right in there. Hard to see. And then got a little bead build up back there because basically it's maybe leaving a little bit of a weak spot right there. But to compensate for that, I left the bead a little bit high on the outside. Uh, the whole thing's just a big experiment anyway to see whether or not uh, I can put it back on the car and, and uh, have it live long and prosper. Um, you guys that are welders, you know what I'm talking about. But take something, just give it a wrap. A lot of times, for whatever reason, if things, if your repair doesn't go very well, it'll just crack right off of there. So, anyway, uh, I'm going to give it a try. But anyway, it's one way to do things. If I'd have got it TIG welded, I don't know what it would have cost me. Probably depending on whether or not I could sweet talk a TIG welder somewhere. But um, this cost me about four bucks. You can buy those rods at Home Depot.